So what are we to make of doubt? Is it a healthy counteractive to impetuous action? Or is doubt a corrosive force in relationships, uh, in opportunities, in endeavors that we might take on? <coughs> have doubt in your own life, the role that it's played. We know that when somebody has lied to us repeatedly, and it's difficult to trust what they say, we gain a, a healthy doubt for the words that come out of their mouths. <coughs> Perhaps you had uh, a friend in high school uh, who was constantly trying to egg you on. Come on, it'll be fun. We won't get in trouble. Nobody's going to get hurt. Maybe some healthy doubt in that case would have been good. But for the most part, doubt is, a, I think, a negative force in our lives. Uh, it is a, a force, uh, an attitude, a position that we take um, around either a belief or a statement words from somebody, a promise from somebody, um, that we, we don't believe, uh, that we doubt. And, and it causes uh, us to come into a position of, of real defensiveness. Um, and we're often in a place of, of either fear um, or vulnerability when we doubt somebody or something. We don't want to risk being hurt again. We don't want to risk being lied to again. We don't want to be risk looking like a fool again for believing something uh, that turns out not to be true. So, so doubt is often for us a, a position of, of real protectiveness. I imagine that's the place that Thomas was in this morning's Gospel. Thomas known uh, by that action of, of doubting. Like doubting Thomas. Everybody knows the story of doubting Thomas. Right? But be, to be fair to Thomas, um, you may remember from last week's Gospel, that all of the apostles, all of the disciples, doubted. Remember the women coming back from the empty tomb and telling them what they had discovered. And they didn't believe it. They thought it was an idle tale. So Thomas was not alone in his doubting of the resurrection. But you can imagine uh, Thomas, where he was. He wasn't with the disciples the first time that Jesus appeared to them and breathed on them and gave them the Holy Spirit and said, Peace be with you. Thomas wasn't present. Perhaps he was out trying to get on with his life after this devastating crucifixion of his Lord, the man that he had been following and hanging so much hope on. His hopes dashed. He's probably in a state of, of real fear and anxiety and wondering what to do. You can understand Thomas's doubts. He didn't want to open himself up to a possibility of believing again in Jesus after having been crushed so completely. Thomas's doubt, I think, is, is understandable. And, and Jesus deals with it so mercifully, doesn't he? He reaches out to Thomas and says, Thomas, come. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Look at the marks of the nails in my hands. Do not doubt, Thomas, but believe. And Thomas does. So doubt, the role of doubt in this gospel story, the role of doubt in our lives can be a, a real impediment to moving forward in our lives, to, to trusting, to, to being adventurous, to, to being in deep relationship with other people. It can be a corrosive force. But I want to contrast doubt with questions and, and raise up the, the contrast between them, the, the fact that the questions, in fact, can be a healthy response to an unknown, to a statement from somebody to a position that you've been offered, to, uh, to a new truth that might have been revealed to you. Questions, in fact, are a healthy response, whereas doubt is that, again, fearful and protective response. To question something, to, to want to know more about something, is a, a healthy way to respond to any new situation. To want to gain more understanding, more facts, more depth of, of uh, what's going on here, what's being offered, what's being proposed what somebody is telling you. The question, I think, has a holiness to it. And there's also a, a humility to it. You know, they say that the beginning of wisdom um, is humility. And I, I think when we are certain about our uh, position in, in, in life, in a particular
particular matter, whether it's a faith matter or, or some other matter in life, when we're certain about where we stand and what we believe and what we know, um, it's a place of being stuck, really, isn't it? It's a place of, of not being open to growth, to, to new ideas, to gaining in wisdom and understanding. We are certain of what we know, that's the end of the story, and we're staying there. If we are to grow as people in, in any area of our lives, creativity and understanding and knowledge in, in our relationships, questions can be a, a healthy and a holy habit to engage. They open us up to, to learning, to, to growing, to changing, uh, to understanding at a deeper level uh, who somebody is, what they're offering us. And when we think about our faith journeys, questions really are at the heart of this whole process, aren't they? If we take a position that we completely understand who God is and where we are in relationship to God, if we take the position that we know exactly what we are to do in our faith lives as disciples of Jesus, if we have a sense that we have got it all figured out, well, that's the height of hubris, isn't it? It's the height of haughtiness, not humility. And it's a place where we will never grow from. We'll be stuck there for our entire lives. It's the root of fundamentalism. I know what I know, and I don't want to explore anything else. So questions really are that tool that God has given us, a curiosity, a desire to know more, that is a, a holy act, is a holy counterweight to fundamentalism and stuckness. One of the favorite things that I engage with in our Sunday school um, is asking the kids for questions. What questions do you have um, about God? What questions do you have about some of the things that you're reading in the Bible? What questions do you have about life? And some of the questions that they come up with are just amazing. Like one the other day, what does a soul look like? Think about that one for a while. I still haven't come up with an answer. <laughs> I'm working on it. They want to know about God's gender. They want to know about where God was when the Big Bang happened. Did God cause the Big Bang? They want to know about creation and, and what happens when things die, when people die, when plants and animals die. Where do they go? What happens to us? Fascinating questions. And, and we know we cherish those questions from our kids, even if they challenge us. But, but at what point in our lives should we stop asking questions? At what point in our faith journeys do questions become irrelevant or not necessary? I would say never. If we are to continue to grow in our relationship with God, if we're going to continue to grow as disciples of Jesus, asking questions is a holy endeavor. And so this morning you've been given um, an index card and a pen. Please feel free to keep the pen. It's a gift from St. David's. Um, it's got our name and address on there and phone number. And if you come across a, a neighbor or a family member who might be uh, wrestling with some questions about the nature of life, God, whatever, offer them the pen. Uh, invite them to come along and explore some of those questions here at St. David's. But my invitation to you this morning is during the distribution of communion or at some point during the service, uh, take a minute to jot down a question that you've got something that you've been wondering about or wrestling with in your own faith journey. And put it in the offering plate or give it to me at the end of the service. Next Sunday, after this service, um, I'm going to invite anybody in the congregation who wants to join in to come and, and share with me um, the questions that we've gathered from last night and from today, uh, to wrestle with them together, uh, to talk about them together, to come up with perhaps some answers or some further questions to deepen our understanding of, of who God is and who we are in relationship to to foster in us that, that beautiful sense of, of curiosity and wonder that I think God has planted in us, uh, that gift that allows us to continue to grow, uh, to develop, uh, to deepen in our relationship with God and with God's creation with each other. So don't be shy, don't be afraid, uh, don't doubt. Uh, ask your questions, uh, offer them uh, as a way to deepen our own conversations together uh, about this wonderful journey that we're all on discovering uh, in more profound ways each and every day who God is and the blessings that God has in store for us. Thanks be to God for questions, for life, for each other.